Hello. Um, I put off honoring my dad and doing a celebration of his life because unlike my mother's wake I did where we celebrated her life, it was so fast after that I couldn't even compose myself. I just bawled the entire thing and could hardly be heard, I don't think, because I was crying so much. But I wanted to collect myself and be strong for this one because my dad was strong and a source of strength. I think he would have wanted it that way. Um, I was always daddy's little girl. Um, he's always been my rock and my hero. Would you like to say something, Isaiah? Well, my grandpa, he was probably one of the most funniest people ever. And I am wearing um, his Korean veteran hat in honor of him today. You want to read what you wrote? Go ahead. You want to go first? No, you go ahead. It's shorter. Why don't you okay. go? So my grandpa, he used to make really, really funny jokes of foreign languages. And he used to, like, have this really funny accent. And we we were we fell off the table dying of laughter he was probably one of the best grandpas ever and an even better an even better dad to my mom well he he was never racist loved everyone of all colors mm -hmm. but he used to think he could do foreign accents and those who knew him knew he really couldn't but that's what made it funny because mm -hmm. uh, it was really funny yeah. and when I was little, about like five years old. Well, no, 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 no. I mean like baby right. infant. But I used to bounce on his um, toe, on Papa's um, big feet. They're about 15 inches. His, he wore size 15, triple E shoe. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, while I'm reading mine, why don't you go get a pair of shoes so that you can show yes. people how big his shoes are. Yeah, his shoes. Really Isaiah good. bought him his last pair of shoes, and he's going to keep them. He saw them and said, I have to get these for Papa. I'm going to begin. Here to honor my dad, I waited to deliver this tribute, cried out so I could be strong, just like Dad. It will not be a religious show the way he wanted, but the truth the way Dad would want it. Larry Dean Guthrie, born September 7, 1933. He passed at 87 on the 21st. Isaiah would like to show you how big his shoes were that we have to fill now that he's gone. Would you yeah. like to show people what they look like? This is how big. And this is the last pair of shoes I ever got him. Yep. And he said, those are awful bright. You sure I can wear bright shoes? And what'd you say? I said, um, I said, you remember because you were he was a veteran you said oh yeah they're <laughs> um american because he used to be a veteran yep he cherished and those. now and now my mom said she's gonna give me to them so when i grow if i even grow that huge <laughs> um i'll get to wear these one day in remembrance of my grandpa yep born larry dean guthrie born september 7th 1933 he passed at 87, a dying breed of chivalrous men, outstanding provider, family man, hardest working man I ever knew, strongest man I ever knew. Never stopped, never gave up. He could engineer anything. Built sheet metal plants all over the United States, invented the Acme wood stove, was a farmer. We had animals, cows, chickens, sheep, ducks, pigs, chickens, a Christmas tree farm where he shipped trees all over the world. Christmas trees in every room, wonderful memories, and he adapted to any work situation. He could sell anything to anyone and managed a Cadillac dealership in the end until retirement. He adapted to any situation to give his wife and family what they needed, what they wanted, what they desired. He sacrificed all for those he loved. In essence, a true man. Now with God and a pretty red-headed violinist singer in heaven, my mother, my mother, Helen. My father supported and provided for me, my sister, Melody, my stepbrother, Rick, and stepdaughters, Shauna and Shelley, and financially helped provide for and support many grandchildren, Larry, Logan, Lindsay, my son, Isaiah, including helping provide for my son and Christmases I could never have pulled off alone as a fiddle player in Nashville.
even helped support exes in need or in dire straits, trust me. But he grew up dirt poor. No silver spoon. All he had was long, uh, all he had was from long hours of labor and sweat, the old-fashioned way. Mom made him what he had nothing, stood by him through driving an Oscar Mayer truck for a second income, a chicken manure truck on the side for extra income. He'd get up to help with school lunches, be dressed in suspenders, a tie, cologne, and a suit for the Cadillac dealership, I remember, and would be out breaking up ice in a suit for the cows, chickens, drive an hour to and from work, and come home, take off his suit, put on his farm clothes, and tend to a farm, repair fence, get cows that were stray down the road. I grew up seeing sweat pour from his brow, and frankly, in my experience, many men can't get off the sofa, a rare breed my father was. He had my lifelong respect and will always. After mom passed in 2011, he saw his then 42-year-old daughter, me, become a first-time mother. I did hospice with mom with a newborn, Isaiah. Dad decided to come here and fill in as both grandfather, grandmother, since grandma didn't get to see Isaiah grow up, and even a father figure to my son, knowing my son and I were living alone most of the time while his father toured. Amazingly, after my mother's death, knowing he was needed, he lost 75 pounds, hit the gym, and moved his life all the way to Tennessee where he knew he was needed in his 80s. Who leaves their hometown in their 80s and moves across the United States to be there for his grandson and daughter, my father, Larry Dean Guthrie, provider, protector. My son called him Papa. He was grandpa, but always a male figure here in the home to throw a ball, even on shaky legs, make him giggle until he fell on the floor laughing hysterically. No one can make us laugh like Papa, right? No. Or hear about a bully at school or share his boy experiences to help my son know he would get through all life's pains just as he did. Okay? Mm -hmm. My son's absence this last year broke his heart and frankly, I believe did him in. That short-term injustice and pain was hard. Too much on an old man's heart who was in his grandson's life and lived with him and helped raise him his whole life, my son's whole life. But my dad told me, honey, when I agreed to come to Tennessee, it was for the good times and the bad times, my job. Again, a chivalrous, real man, hard to find these days. He didn't leave this earth until he knew we were safe, justice was served, and Isaiah was rightly home. And didn't leave this earth until he heard music, something he was used to hearing from my mother. We sang him home, didn't we, Isaiah? Mm-hmm, we did. And he took his last, last breath after hearing he and mom's favorite lifelong love song from a 50-year-old marriage. I sang Dean Martin's Everybody Loves Somebody Sometime. He passed first. Uh, his passing first, I'd like to share and work backwards. <coughs> As God answered my prayers in many years that when he passed, he wouldn't suffer long, but leave this world in peace, not be alone and surrounded by love. He did. We sang Papa home. The chaplain came and when he read his Bible reading, he read out the book of Isaiah, not knowing Papa's grandson was named Isaiah. I believe that was no coincidence, but God ordained. He anointed dad with oil and frankincense. After that, our friend Marty Morgan, we're grateful to, wanted to come and read passages and say prayers my father grew up knowing from Catholic school as fond memories, although dad in the end said he belonged to no denomination, just believed in Christ and God. The prayers I thought would bring back fond memories and comfort from youth, and they did, I believe. The reading and prayers were lovely from Marty and lovely by both the chaplain and our friend. Hearing my son say the Lord's Prayer, Papa must have loved. But the Holy Spirit, thank you, honey, but the Holy Spirit, I believe, showed up when we started to sing. We sang hymns. He will raise you up on eagle's wings, Marty broke out into song. Amazing grace, Isaiah chimed in at the top of his lungs. And I sang the garden, a song my mother used to sing. Dad rested peacefully through it all until I said, quote, I think I want to end with one last song. My mom and dad's love song between them. I started to sing Dean Martin's Everybody Loves Somebody Sometime. Everybody falls in love somehow. Something in your kiss just told me my sometime is now. Everybody loves somebody sometimes. And although my dreams were overdue, your love made it well worth waiting for someone like you. Dad's, dad opened his right eye, lifted up his elbow after hearing the tune, struggling to put his arm over me or perhaps put his arm over whoever he believed was singing that song. 
I lifted his big arm over me and continued to sing it in his ear. Marty and Isaiah said he gave a little smile, touched my hair. He soon took a small sigh shortly after and was gone to heaven. Today, Isaiah and I wonder now if he heard me or my mother's voice in my voice, taking over the tune, joining with the angels to take him home. Just because a couple days ago, because a couple days ago, Isaiah was snooping through Papa's old trunk for memories, old memories in there. He came running out with an old recordable Hallmark Valentine card saying, oh my gosh, mom, open this. You are singing that love song. You're singing that love song to Papa before he died. Everybody loves somebody. And I opened it and to my amazement, it was my mother's voice singing everybody loves somebody sometime. The card addressed to Bear, her nickname for him, signed, quote, love your redhead. I said, Isaiah, that is Grandma Helen's son that you never got to meet singing that song. That is your grandma's voice, not mine, singing that very song I sang before Papa passed. Coincidence? Well, I don't believe in coincidences, neither did Isaiah. Did he hear me or did he hear my mother coming with the angels to take him home? We will never know. Would you like to play that yes. card and show it? This is the card that I found um, a few days ago. Um, the first part is, I want you to have a Valentine's Day that as sweet as you are to me. And then... Open it and hold it up really inside. close. Inside. Really close. Everybody loves somebody sometimes. Everybody falls in love somehow. Happy Valentine's, sweetheart. We simply couldn't meet. Uh, believe it, that that happened to be the last song that I sang. Who was dad? Larry Dean Guthrie. He was the strongest man I ever knew. Grew up in Portland, Oregon, pretty poor, raised by my granny, Cora May we Real, who was raised in an orphanage. Took in cousins off the street or helped others and found a way to get used shoes, used clothes, and food somehow. Dad's biological father was not in the picture, sadly, so after much poverty, Three brothers, cousins needing a home even, and after much government cheese, even snow on the mattresses with holes in the roof, Granny met Gabriel Real, I believe an angel, who took on providing for Grandma and three boys, Jack, Larry, Donnie, and then Aunt <coughs> Trina they had together, my sweet aunt I just spoke with. In no coincidence, my father followed in his footsteps and was like Brad Paisley, Paisley sang, he was, quote, the dad he didn't have to be, also to my brother, Rick, his stepson he adopted at two years old. My brother had a dad that went from work in his business suit, 14-hour days or more, grabbed his tripod camera, and headed to the school for his son's basketball game or track meet, and filled many albums full of photos of his basketball playing, sports, track, and was proud dad to a stepson, my brother, giving Christmases to him with all he dreamed of asking for on Christmas morn. I think my brother... Dad's stepson, I have found, has more photos of him, his school drawings and memories filed by my dad to keep, more than my dad's two biological girls, my sister and me. More photos of my brother and his keepsakes than really me and my sister's school days. I believe because of Grandpa Gabe coming in to be the dad he didn't have to be to my father. Grandpa Gabe, who took on role of father for my dad, didn't own a car until the end of his life. A quiet man, but put, took dad to work with him at sheet metal to learn a trade. An, impe an impeccable work ethic dad maintained a lifetime. Dad was never late. People knew that of my dad. On time was late, he'd say. Quote, being early was on time, dad said. Being early and staying late was the key to promotion and success, he said. Dad was the most responsible, strong man I ever met. If he put his mind to do something, he did it, period. He was poor in the city of Portland, Oregon. Uh, they couldn't have pets, could hardly feed themselves. So dad hung over bridges at night in the city to pick up nesting pigeons for pets. In the city up on the rooftops, he built his first pigeon coop. His dream was one day having a farm. He put the homing pigeons on trains and they'd time how long it took them to come home. He'd whistle, he said, and they'd come to him as a boy. Instead of accepting his fate of childhood poverty, never having much, he vowed to never be poor again and sweat for every dime he made. No silver spoon, sweat. I helped dad build the chicken house and helped him on the farm. He taught me to build and create with my hands, taught me how to use tools. Um, why I invented toddler beds and knew how to build them. It was my dad. 
a builder, an engineer. Dad also was head mess sergeant in the Korean War at a time cooks didn't just add water, but they'd deliver a whole cow and he would have to butcher up a whole cow for the soldiers. Stationed in Alaska at 30 degrees below zero through the army, his discharge papers were lost. He never relied on government support nor VA for anything. They didn't recognize him with lost records. Um, until this last summer, where I would not give up digging for evidence to honor my father as a veteran he deserved. Summer 2020, dad got the call. Mr. Guthrie, we finally found you, sir. Thank you so much for your service. After I sent a paper with a gold medal that had a little number, they found him. 87, a little yet late to recognize him, yet dad teared up, finally, getting the credit and recognition due him. I understand how I fought through a bone disease, hip and thigh replacement, and never agreed to stay a victim, but be better than before, be better broken, as a song I wrote, my father's genes and spirit. My body was broken and heart when a guy I loved took off. Same happened to my dad. At 23, dad was on a high wire in sheet metal, had a drill bit and drilled in accidentally to a hot wire where not, that was not supposed to be on. Hundreds of volts of electricity went through his body, stopped his heart, he died. Saw his life pass before him, the light at the end of the tunnel, as he told me. Um, he fell 20 to 30 feet, landed on his arms and wrists. <coughs> the pavement <coughs> resuscitated his heart. He woke in a body cast. His love also took off, didn't want him broken as well. She could not have children, so she adopted two girls. He paid child support on for 18 years, plus having to support three other children. I have no idea how he did it. Overwhelming amount of work nonstop, basically. He told me he had no idea how he did it either. <laughs> Shalom, be quiet. He said it was only God. It was a blessing in disguise that in a body cast alone, heartbroken, God had my mom waiting in the wings for him one day who would love him a lifetime, broken or not. He lived with artificial wrists, elbows, a cracked pelvis. <laughs> Nurses sat on his arms in, in rehab for a year to try and create a joint where there wasn't a joint. It didn't yeah. stop him. Didn't feel sorry for himself. He worked hard on a farm, slung hay bales like they were feathers and never complained. We used to be amazed on how my dad would um, fling hay bales like they were weightless. Here's one. Uh, how he'd use the shovel and shovel things as if he was shoveling marshmallows all with artificial wrists and elbows. Dad's body was filled with arthritis from the fall, filled with rheumatoid arthritis. Doctors shook his hand, said, I'm sorry, sir, I can't even find joints. But he never even so much as took a Tylenol in the end. He just kept moving. He said, if I stop, I'll turn to cement. If you keep moving, that's the key. Up until a year ago, he was the only senior over 80 at the YMCA lifting the entire stack of leg weights, working out at the gym with me and Isaiah not playing bingo at the YMCA, working out. A proud Oregon Duck fan. <laughs> Everyone knew he loved the Oregon Ducks for all who knew him. He wanted his grandson to see that at any age you should exercise, move, and live. Never get old if you decide not to. My parents never got old. They dance, and I'm gonna say made love a lifetime, and I'm proud of that, and set out on adventures like two young kids. A few years back, dad must have been 85. We were going horseback riding. I told dad they have a Jeep to follow behind and see the stranger to go with us and his grandson, Isaiah. He didn't have to ride a horse. We got there and he said, no way, get me a horse. Of course, he also watched John Wayne movies nonstop. No surprise. Isaiah giggled at Papa. And Western shows. And Westerns. And pa Isaiah giggled at Papa horseback riding at 85 with us. So proud. Dad later said, Yep, I'm sure sore, but that just lets me know I'm still alive. And I think we have that mm. horseback riding picture somewhere. We'll find it oh, later. Right there. Oh, you want to grab it? Chivalry, chivalry, rare today. In my father's 80s, a man mistreating me challenged my father. Uh, this wasn't Isaiah's father. Yes. This challenged my father to a, a fight, a physical yes. fight. There's the and horseback riding. Yeah, that's Papa. Papa in his and 80s. And I was, I, I think, up ahead. Was I up ahead? Yes. Up ahead? And he was horseback riding in his 80s. A man mistreating me challenged my father to a fight in the street. Without batting an eye, my dad in his 80s was willing to lay his life down for me. He said, son, I'm old, yes. But son, I grew up on the streets. I just need one shot and I have only one. But if I get that one, I will break your neck like a toothpick pick. He threatened, to leave, threatened to leave him to leave his daughter alone. And he did. The man looked 
in his eyes and knew my dad would lay his life down for me. The man realized he was serious and left me alone. In the car, I cried home to my mother, holding my dad, crying that he was willing to risk his life for me. How do you replace that? You don't. Mom teased him when we got there and said, good God, Larry, who do you think you are, Hercules? To, to his daughter, yes, he was Hercules and always will be like Hercules. Last year of my life, he shared with me, it was only God keeping him going. He wasn't Hercules, it was God. His faith wasn't public, but private, along with his charities he didn't share, sacred between him and God. Dad had hands the size of a gorilla, feet that were the size 15 triple wide, and he was my rock and my hero. No matter what the problem, he'd say, I'll handle it, Helen, to my mom, or Heidi, let Dad handle it. A chivalrous gentleman, nearly extinct today. Even when he could hardly walk, and I begged him not to get up because he could hardly walk, as soon as we went to bed, we'd hear Papa get up, check the lights, check the doors, barely walking. And I would say, oh no, he's going to fall. He's going to fall. But he had to make sure after we went to bed that we, the doors were locked, no matter if I said they were or not. He felt it was job, his job as a man to protect a woman and a child. After we spent the last year together sharing things, I believe only he told me. Some things mom didn't even know, I think. Getting real close I heard about his fears and times he had no idea how he would handle it, but he figured it out with God's help. I have resulted to stay, stay strong too, just like da God, dad, to trust in God and in myself and what dad taught me. Ride the waves like dad did, knock down, get up and say, bring it to another wave. And I will dad. My mom, who in the 70s was a music teacher at a Christian school wanting to cancel the music program, dad ho helped her present selling beef jerky and pepperoni sticks off his Ir Oscar Mayer truck to the school to save the school <coughs> program, and they did. The kids who had to pay for their own instruments selling beef jer jerky and pepperoni ended up practicing paying for their own instruments. They ended up winning honors at competitions, all due to selling beef jerky off my dad's Oscar Mayer truck. Kids bought their own instruments. They practiced, blew away the competition at adjudication. Dad saw much religious legalism and sexism and persecution of my mother, mostly out of envy. And later, the same legalistic sexism and persecution done to me. It grieved him to see women still mistreated and judged wrongly in 2020 and 2021. Women used as doormats for sexist men. So much so that at the Cadillac dealership, I found out in his records after he passed, he filed lawsuit against them for mistreating the ladies at work, treating them as sex objects. When he brought up the injustice to the ladies, at the, to the owner, the men began to harass him horribly at work also. So dad filed lawsuit to stand up for the ladies. Amazingly, the owner was so touched my father cared about the women and how they were mistreated, he offered him the position of manager of the Cadillac dealership. And all the men who persecuted the ladies and him had to answer to my father. We can call that karma, what you sow, what you reap. reap. Yes, some fired on the spot, and rightly so. I think of the Bible verse, the net you set out for others, you'll fall into yourself. And my dad saw that play out. My dad and I cried much this summer and shared deepest secrets. I told dad how much I thanked him for all the incredible memories of the farm, holidays, Christmases, school parties, memories, and gave him a fanfare while he was still alive so he could know how much he was loved and how much I thanked him. Please click on the tune in this link provided. The tune I wrote called Thank You, I wrote and gave my father an honor um, to give him a fanfare while he was still alive so he could know how I felt about him. No, some of the pictures aren't me. It was just to help the story. The pictures that were me, I look like him, have blonde hair Mom, with curly. Mom. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. you want to show? This is a picture of my mom and papa um, on the farm. The pictures in that thank you video that look like that, those were me. The others I just used to uh, describe the song, like a musical picture of it. Okay, please do the same in my father's honor and give your father a fan for while he is still alive. Say everything you need to say while they are here. I did. We had amazing moments of getting to know one another intimately this last year, crying together in times of pain. I will end with this. When I was grieving, feeling defeated, broken, saying to dad, others can hurt you and there's no justice in this world. They get away with it, feeling sorry for myself. 
And for my son, my wise father looked at me and said, Oh, no, 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 Heidi Jo, trust me, no one gets away with it. In the end, hurting others. In the end, they will pay dearly, honey. God is watching. No one who sets out to hurt another gets away with it. You may not see it in this lifetime, but it, most of the time, in the end, you do. What goes around comes around, I learned from my father. And dad, what comes around is this. The strong, diligent man that trusted in God, that never gave up, no matter what life threw at him. The man that was better broken. The man that showed up early, worked late, and went the extra mile I'm going to do and teach Isaiah the same. You left huge size triple, 15 triple E shoes to fill, but we will stay strong for you in your honor. Never will we give up. We will remember trusting is good by checking is better. Check the checker. That was one of dad's sayings. Trusting is good, but checking is better. Check the checker. He'd also say, remember, it's all about the money and follow the money trail, even in churches. Smart advice. I found out dad was most wise and right. Trust in God, not in man, not even in a man behind a pulpit. Don't trust in buildings built by human hands. Trust in the God of heaven and the God within your heart. My dad did. I love you, dad. I will always be daddy's little girl. You're Heidi Jo. Smarter, wiser, stronger, just like you. Thank you for moving across the country in your 80s to fill in love and time needed for my little boy and for me. Thank you. Thank you. Please share and tell your father before he's gone how much he means to you. Say thank you while they're still alive. And please click on the link below and listen to the song Thank You that I gave to my fam, my dad, a fan for, for him while he was still alive. I love you. We love you, Dad. Thank you.